Okay, other very first top trending issue here is that Labour has rejected federal government's 54,000 Naira new minimum wage offer. Now, the, the meeting on the ongoing negotiations on new minimum wage has been adjourned till Wednesday, uh, which is today, after the organized Labour rejected uh, the new 54,000 Naira minimum wage proposed by the federal government, which is an increase on its earlier proposed 48,000 Naira, and that is by 6,000 Naira as it is. Uh, Tuesday's meeting came as a result of the walkout staged by members of the organized labor following the proposed uh, proposal of 48,000 Naira's minimum wage by the federal government during last week's meeting. Organized labor on Monday reiterated this May 31, 2024 deadline for the implementation of the new minimum wage. The national president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Joe Ajayro, insisted on 615,000 Naira minimum wage, arguing that the amount was arrived at after an analysis of the current economic situation and the needs of an average Nigerian family of six. He blamed the government and the OPS for the breakdown in the negotiation, saying, despite earnest efforts to reach an equitable agreement, the less than reasonable action of the government and the organized private sector has led to a breakdown of negotiations. While appreciating what they described as the efforts made thus far, the NLC and TUC emphasized the urgency of reaching a fair and equitable agreement that reflects the true value of Nigerian workers' contributions to the nation's development and the current crisis of survival facing Nigerians as a result of government's policies. They also affirmed commitments to ensuring that their interests and welfare of workers are adequately protected in the negotiation process. President Bola Tinubu, through Vice President Kashim Shetima on January 30, 2024, inaugurated a 37-member tripartite committee on minimum wage to come up with a new minimum wage ahead of the expiration of the current 30,000 Naira wage on uh, April 18. With its membership cutting across federal and state governments, the private sector and organized labor, the panel is to recommend a new national minimum wage for the country. Now, during the inauguration of the panel, Shetima urged the members to speedily arrive at a resolution and submit their reports early. In furtherance of its assignment, a hearing was held simul simultaneously on March 7 in Lagos, Kanu, Enugu, uh, uh, Akwaibom, Adamawa, and Abuja. The NLC and TUC in different states proposed various figures as a living wage with NLC members in the southwest states demanding 794000 uh, while the TUC suggested 447,000. At the North Central Zone public hearing in Abuja, the workers demanded 709,000 Naira as a new national minimum wage, while their counterparts in the South South clamored for 850,000 Naira. In the Northwest, 485,000 Naira was proposed, while the Southeast stakeholders demanded 540,000 Naira minimum wage. Organized labor, however, settled for 615,000 Naira as a living wage. Now, we just keep wondering uh, why this rigmarole, why this going up and down uh, by federal government, NLC, TUC, and all that. And we don't know where the solution is going to come. At the end of the day, it is the entire Nigeria that will suffer and Nigerians as well who are already suffering right now. Now, where is this center uh, that the federal government needs to meet uh, labor? The lowest amount proposed by any labor union in any of the zones was 400,000 and above. And uh, the federal government is proposing 54,000 Naira. It used to be 48,000 Naira. Now they moved it up to uh, 54,000 Naira. That means they added 6,000 to what they proposed initially. In the meantime, uh, states like um, uh, Cross River had already proposed 40,000 Naira. And then Edo was talking about 70,000 Naira. And the federal government's tripartite committee was offering 54,000 Naira. I don't know where this is going to end. We're not taking sides. But um, the operative word there or statement in that uh, whole issue was... The suffering of Nigerians are as a result of the policies of government. That's what NLC and TUC are saying. And I'm wondering what the government takes to the table when they're negotiating. Do they tell NLC and TUC that these government policies are going to start paying off in XYZ? Or this, 
Because if you're accepting that, okay, because of my policies, you're suffering, I'm going to give you whatever you are asking us. So just tell me a reasonable sum that I can afford. It means, in my little thinking, it means that you're accepting the fact that your policies can never make their lives better. Because if they can, you could have used that as a bargaining chip. But now you're accepting that, okay, I know my policies are bad enough. So you are going to continue suffering. So I'm going to make sure that uh, you earn more money because that is what, to me, it means. So if there's a particular policy that is making Nigerians to suffer, why not review that policy and see how Nigerians' lives will be better? And your negotiation at that table will have more credibility because, okay, if, for instance, it's uh, what everybody's talking about, the fuel subsidy removal, which everybody says that that's what kick-started the suffering of Nigerians. Now, if you have to review that policy, how bad can that be? But you're accepting the fact that you, because of that policy, Nigerians are suffering, so you're going to add more money to them. And then that is the only thing you're taking to the table. We don't know what the details are of that negotiation, so let me be fair to the government. But if the government is not taking this to the table and telling the people that, okay, because of this, uh, you are going to have a better life, uh, maybe in the next two months and all that, or this is what this policy is going to achieve for us, which a lot of people are not seeing anyway, uh, then negotiation will be difficult. Then labor might just insist on the lowest uh, amount that was proposed in any of the zones, which is above 400,000 or slightly above 400,000. Will Nigeria be able to, um, to foot that bill every month? The states that couldn't pay 30,000, can they now pay that one, even though we've heard that uh, their money has increased because of the sub fuel subsidy removal? Right now, what are they doing with the money? That we're not seeing any difference. And uh, then when they are asked to pay, 400 and something thousand, or maybe even if 300,000, can they pay? Well, whatever it is, we don't hope that uh, that table, that negotiation table, will uh, give us results that Nigerians will want. Uh, whether you are on the side of government or you're on the side of the people, we need to survive as a country and we need to take uh, seriously uh, what the people are feeling on the streets. For, so if you are a leader anywhere, please do well to enter the streets and get the feelings of the people. Because like we say on the streets in Nigeria, you don't read, that's how it is. Okay, another thing I'll just like to talk about, maybe not having a very uh, big literature that I'm going to read out to you, is that uh, generator fumes kill seven university students in Bielsa State. Uh, these people were killed by generator fumes. And why am I bringing this as a top trending issue? It is because there is a multiplier effect of any policy that is not or that is detrimental to the people. We've already been called generator republic, but how many people do we have to keep losing because of this generator? We know that, like some people have said, maybe it's a conspiracy theory, but that some people have said that the people sabotaging the power sector are the people who are the businessmen that provide the generators and every other thing that is related to that. Whether or not that is true, but the fact that we are not getting it right in the power sector, it's a problem. Even when the uh, Minister for uh, Power is trying to do something uh, to the power sector, he came with uh, appetite in the power sector. You, segregation, you're, you're not cutting off some people and you're calling them uh, band A, some are in band B and all that. Is that a class system that has come? Nigerians are not comfortable with that. So. If we don't get it right in the power sector, we'll keep losing people like this. We've seen families, some of them up to 10 at the same time, dying from generator fumes. It wouldn't be like that if everybody had affordable and available electricity to them, public power uh, uh, to them. So these people are needlessly gone because the government's policy that made it impossible for us to have um, public power has made them go. Whether we like it or not, that is it, it's related. If they had public power, they wouldn't be buying generators. If they had public power, they wouldn't need to sleep in uh, that house where the fumes will be entering and all that. And we see a lot of people sleep in the face me, I face you kind of thing, like, like we say all the time. And then you cannot put your generator 
uh, in front of someone else's house. So if you have to put on the generator, it has to be at your own veranda, which may be the only place that you have ventilation. So you just put it outside your window so that um, you won't disturb somebody else. And then the fumes will be coming into the room. People have died. We've seen them. Three people, four people, ten people even uh, that are staying because you can't afford good accommodation. Everybody is in one room and then you're putting on that generator because the heat is too much because of all of you guys. And then people die out of it. So whether we like it or not, the blame will come back to the fact that we don't have public power supply. And whose fault is that? Your guess is as good as mine. So please, whoever is in charge of public power, whatever the government needs to do, Nigeria needs this for businesses to thrive, for people to live longer, for people to have some more money in their pockets, not the band A, band B, band C, whatever bands, and some bands that don't even know what alphabet they belong to. So I'm calling on the government and all the relevant authorities to do something so that we stop losing Nigerians needlessly. Now, seven students of a university in Bielsa State, seven people who could have impacted on Nigeria's economy, Nigeria's policy making, Nigeria's whatever, have just gone needlessly. And their parents who uh, maybe some of them are very, very poor, but are struggling to have one person at least graduate in the university. Because if they were so well to do, I'm not sure seven of them would have been in a room uh, to die at the same time. Most of them would have been in good flats uh, that uh, they will have a, a general uh, power supply. They wouldn't need to cluster into, um, to, to, to jam pack themselves into one room and all that. So please, whoever is in, in charge or the re relevant authorities, please do something uh, about this. Now, there's also an accusation that uh, we heard from uh, a, a monarch. And uh, he says, I have been told EFCC takes orders from highest bidder. That's according to the Oba of Benin. Now, not much might be said about this, but when they say there's no smoke without fire, uh, then there's a cause for, uh, for worry. Because if everybody will be saying uh, the, the, the agencies that are supposed to fight corruption or to fight insecurity or to fight a lot of other things are the ones who are compromised, then there is a problem. Anytime government is not trustworthy, anywhere that government is not trustworthy, and I, I'm, not say, I'm, not saying, I'm just saying this generally, when government is not trustworthy because of the things that are happening and people begin to, to bring up rumors, conspiracy theories and all that and all that, there is a problem because the people need to trust government. Now, if an Oba is saying this, it means that he has information that I may not even have and they are always guarded in their comments. And if he could come out to say this, that means he has found something which the ordinary man is also saying. So EFCC may not be the way he is putting it that, or he has been told that they are compromised and the highest bidder is the one uh, whose bidding the EFCC does. But there is a fundamental problem. Why is it that people don't trust the EFCC enough to stand for them? And they're saying that they're being compromised. What are the things that they are doing that they need to change? I'm just using this to call on EFCC, DSS, police, army, whatever um, agency is uh, supposed to be uh, for the people to sit up and make sure that they, their image within the population is positive enough. Because if it is not positive and people don't trust them, then even security will be a problem. I cannot be a whistleblower if I don't trust EFCC. My neighbor could have uh, tons and tons of uh, Naira notes in his house. I can see it and I become a whistleblower and then I, turn, I become a, the person in problems now, in trouble. We, we've, heard, uh, one, we've had one case like that where someone was a, a whistleblower and everybody got to know this whistleblower. The identity could not be protected and you know I don't know how that case ended, but it is not something that we want to be doing in Nigeria, not trusting our agencies that are supposed to protect us. People are saying police are compromised. The army is compromised. And there was a story yesterday or the day before yesterday where people went and kidnapped a lot of others, 20 or so, and they were all wearing army uniform. 
How did they get the army uniform? Uh, how did it lead to that? How can people go and kidnap up to 20 people? Sometimes they kidnap truck loads of people and the security uh, agencies do not see it. And then people begin to say that they are part of this insecurity. And then how do you answer them when these things like this are happening? All I'm saying is if you're a government establishment, your first primary purpose is to work assiduously to make sure that you are trustworthy enough. And then when you're trustworthy, the people will volunteer information. The people will want to help you in whatever you're doing. And then your job will be easier because you cannot do it alone. You cannot go it alone. Well, that is how it is. So these words of the Oba, God forbid that they are true. But whether they're true or not, then there is a problem. Something needs to be done to gain the trust and confidence of the people in you, whether EFCC, whether DSS, whether ICPC, or the Army, or the police, Navy, whatever. That is the, the, the thing we're looking at this morning. We also have this other headline, which is saying, um, retired police officers protest over unpaid pensions. Retired police officers protest over unpaid pensions. And I'm going to join that with this, uh, the, the next one, which is uh, a contractor admits receiving 2.17 billion naira from the office of the NSA for no project at all. For no project. Someone is receiving 200, oh, 2.17 billion naira to do nothing. So what will you tell the police pensions uh, um, officers? Oh, sorry, the retirees of the police. What will you tell the NLC when they are going to the negotiating table to tell you to give them 615,000 naira? What will you tell the average Nigerian when you say that they should tighten their belts when someone can have access to 2.17 billion naira for no project at all? So now that he's being quizzed, he has admitted that he, had, he received that money, 2.17 billion naira, to do nothing. And that is just one out of maybe thousands and thousands of the projects that we've not even heard about. And they run into millions. So what will you tell me, a common Nigerian? What will you tell that woman on the... In, in the village that is going to her farm and trying to just make ends meet? What will you tell the average worker? That Nigeria is broke, Nigeria is not big enough, Nigeria doesn't have money, and then someone has access to 2.17 billion naira. And this was not last year. This was not the year before last. It's been a long time. Someone will have access to 120 billion naira, who is supposed to be um, the auditor general or is the accountant general. And then after that, you just do a plea bargain and maybe he gives you a quarter of that money and everything dies down. So what will the government tell the people? What will you tell us? Nigeria doesn't have money. We have to borrow from IMF. We have to borrow from the World Bank. We have to borrow from anywhere that there is money. Africa Zim Bank, every, everywhere that there is money that could be, can be borrowed, we are borrowing. And somebody somewhere will have access to 2.17 billion to do nothing. Someone will have access to 80 billion and nobody will find out where it went to. So these are worrisome issues and until they are addressed, we may be sitting on a keg of gunpowder and I don't know if we can survive another NSAS kind of thing and I pray it never happens. Nigerians don't want it anymore. But when we go to the negotiating table, let us also think about the people. While we think about ourselves, those people at the table, we should think about others that were not able or are not able to ever get to that negotiation table. Democracy is the government of the people, by the people, for the people. Everything is people. When people are removed from the picture, then it's no longer democracy. Whatever name else that can be called will be called, but that's not democracy. Now, this is not me uh, pontificating or anything. This is me talking like a Nigerian who is facing the same problems that almost everybody else is facing and just begging whoever is in charge of anything that can make the lives of Nigerians better to sit up 
and do what they need to do. And this is not just for the government. This is also for individuals. This is also for the citizens, because if we don't sit up, the office of the citizen, as uh, one of our friends would say, if we don't sit up and take responsibility for whatever we do, things might continue like this. Now everybody or a lot of, a lot of people are just waiting for their own opportunity to get into uh, that space and loot if they have to loot and do what they're not supposed to do, what they're even accusing others of doing right now. So the citizens will have to sit up and be patriotic enough and those in government will also have to sit up and remember what democracy is. Well, I'm done talking about all this. Uh, up next is going to be our Off the Press, where we look at headlines from our national dailies. So we'll just take a short break and return with our guest to x-ray uh, this paper. Stay with us. <laughs>